Metal work at Les Moody Senior High School. Most people, Les Moody's not that funny. <laughs> Most people got through eight to nine projects. I struggled on two. I folded some sheet metal into a letterbox, one you would never want to put your hands into. And then I spent the rest of the term confined to the lathe, forging the world's most impotent screwdriver. That experience taught me that my hands might be useful for maths, but they're not so good at metalwork. Fast forward to the late 90s. I'm scribbling notes in lectures, cramming for exams at uni, delivering pizzas on the weekend, and trashing my hearing at grungy gigs around Perth. My dad offers me the opportunity to work on a project for his company in Kalgoorlie. The pitch. You'll be a trades assistant working with a project manager and boiler makers to install fume extraction hoods and ductwork over tapping bays to collect the sulphur dioxide, send it off to the acid plant and turn it into sulf sulfuric acid. Yeah, I didn't know what that meant either. <laughs> so let's try and break it down. So a trades assistant is a shit kicker. You get roasted by everyone, hold things. Roasted by everyone, hold things. <laughs> the project manager is the boss. Boilermakers definitely got through more than 10 projects in Year 9 metalwork, and a lot more. The fume extraction hood. Think the range hood over your stove, but it's about the size of a car. Ducting, that's what Bruce Willis was climbing through in Die Hard. <laughs> a tapping bay, it's about the size of a garage, but you've got giant cauldrons the size of SUVs getting parked in there by cranes and then the back of the tapping bay opens up and spews molten nickel into this giant cauldron. Sulphur dioxide, fart smells. <laughs> acid plant turns the fart smells into acid. I still wasn't convinced but then he told me about the money and I thought, hmm, maybe this is a good idea. Now we're all familiar with hot 40 degree days in Perth summers and I'd work next to a pizza oven so I thought, how bad could a nickel furnace be? <laughs> Turns out pretty bad, like, <laughs> think Arnie at the end of Terminator 2 when he's like getting dropped down into that molten metal, except there's no thumbs up. My first day on site, I'm dressed head to toe in this thick cotton, wearing boots, gloves, safety glasses, a hard hat and a respirator. It's a hot, sweaty shock. We took a garden thermometer onto the top of the furnace where we would be working. It went up to 50 degrees and broke. I soon learned what the respirator was for. When that molten metal spews out of the furnace into the giant cauldron, the first waff of gas, it's like it stinks but then the smell disappears and I can feel burning inside my nose and throat as I'm racing to cover my face. My important jobs as a shit kicker, carry things, hold things, pull things and move things. One of the things I had to move was a platform for the boilermakers to stand on so they could weld brackets to the side of the furnace to connect all the ductwork up. When moving a platform in the uh, tapping bay, it was actually really tricky because the molten metal spews out of the furnace into the cauldron and it's just like pouring a tin of tomatoes into a pan. Most of it goes in, but there's splatter everywhere. Trying to get a platform stable on dried metal splatter, it's harder than stuffing a napkin under a wobbly cafe table. Les, the project manager, enlisted local boilermakers from Kalgoorlie to work with us. The first was Wayne, and I think his only hobby outside of work was drinking. <laughs> Each time he climbed into the Hilux, his pickled sweaty stench was overwhelming. And then some days he just didn't turn up. 
We had Nigel and Chris. They were both hard as, but they only lasted a couple of weeks. And why would you? It was like working in hell, hot, sweaty and dangerous. The only thing that was keeping me going was the cash I was going to see at the end of summer. Week six, I'm fucking hating it. but I think I've got a hang of things. I'm putting the platform into place one day and then I step back and I feel nothing under my foot. A rush of air past my ears and a thump on my back. I open my eyes, look up. I've fallen two metres down a hole. Now I know intellectually you're supposed to wiggle your fingers and toes, but I just sit up and look at my hands. I wasn't wearing my gloves. Now, my reaction was to reach out and try and stop myself, but when I dragged my hands over that dried metal splatter, my fingers were shredded like they'd been through a cheese grater. I go to the first aid post to go and get cleaned up. The nurse comes in. She wipes her brow. Fuck, it's hot out there. I've been sweating my box off. <laughs> what happened to you? She has a really kind expression, despite being in Cal Kalgoorlie for a really long time. <laughs> you say you fell backwards, like this bruising on your back is really big. You must have landed really hard. Uh, yeah, I fell backwards. I didn't want to tell her what happened. I didn't want to get anyone into trouble or get kicked off site. I wanted that money. She pulls all the metal out of my fingers, bandages my hands, sends me back out to work. Week seven. <laughs> I am definitely wearing my gloves all the time. And I'm just, I'm tired, but I'm determined to put in a few more weeks, earn a few more dollars. But that dream quickly fades when I grab onto a pipe and send a cloud of dust into my eyes. Back to the nursing post as she's putting drops into my eyeballs to reveal all the scratches, she says, that's it, you're done, you're going home. So after seven weeks, I'm on a plane back to Perth. And as my eyeballs and my hands are starting to heal, I wonder, was it really worth it? Until that next Sunday, the only burning I can feel is the sun on my neck and the money in my pocket as I'm lined up at the bar at the big day out to buy a beer. <laughs> or maybe three, because I fucking earned it. Thank <laughs> you.